All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my latest interview, uh, 45 speakers, 45 minutes for 45 days. Um, and I have the lovely and wonderful Emma Farrow with me today, um, who is a plant consciousness lady. Um, and um, I thank you very much for spending some time with me today, Emma. And how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Eli. How are you? Yeah, really good. Really good. excited for the conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, really nice. So, um, so Emma, would you like to tell us a little bit about um, who you are and what you do and where you are in your journey? Sure. Well, yeah, as you know, I think you know me from my plant consciousness days when I used to run the um, plant consciousness event in London. Mm -hmm. And um, during that time, um, I met lots of wonderful plant communicators and healers and shamans and um, I also trained for many years with, with some of the best ones. So I, I ran that event so I could kind of um, find out who were the people I wanted to train with. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, I'm a plant spirit healer is my uh, day job. And um, so I have um, clients all around the world. I work remotely and I run a, a team of plant spirits and we cleanse and uh, do a forensic cleanse actually on the energy field of my clients to help them release kind of um, toxicities, attachments, um, fix the energy field after traumas, etc., um, to help with healing and spiritual development, etc., and psychic hygiene, of course. And so I have been doing that for several years. I also um, I teach. I'm a shamanic teacher. So I teach people how to work with, with plant spirits in a conscious way um, and how to bring them into their own healing modalities or into their, or, or to become a plant spirit healer. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an author. So I um, mm -hmm. wrote a book about it as well. So, <laughs> so um, it's a really beautiful thing um, being into plant consciousness. Where, where did that start for you? Um, it started when I was, uh, studying for my masters in Italy, and I was running a I was running an event in London called Gateways of the Mind, and it was all about lucid dreaming, dreaming consciousness exploration, um, out of body experiences, that kind of thing. And somebody came to the the event and said, "Have you ever worked with plant medicine?" And I I didn't know what they meant, and uh, so they invited me to an iboga ceremony. And um, usually they said they work with um, people with addictions, et cetera, but they were putting together a group of people who were on their spiritual path, um, meditators, et cetera, to um, see how they would experience this wonderful um, plant, this root from Africa. And so I went to the ceremony and just had a paradigm shifting experience where I sat and spoke to the spirit of a plant for an hour and mm -hmm. asked it questions and it was giving me um, truthful answers back and so I was like wow this is amazing and it was also teaching me in Buddhist concepts which I found extraordinary so mm -hmm. I was starting to understand in a much more kind of direct experience way what I was actually studying um, in Italy and so that just changed my paradigm basically mm -hmm. and then from there what I did was thought well I, obviously I, I kind of dabbled and, and with ayahuasca and, and had some beautiful experiences there but I really wanted to find out okay these wonderful plants from these different countries are speaking to me and we're able to communicate with them well, what, are, what are my native plants and trees going to say so um, when I moved back to the UK I moved to Wales and I just spent years just in the middle of nowhere in Wales just immersed in the plants and trees and communicating with them and learning um, to communicate with them and, and and allowing them to heal me actually the way I learned was allowing them to heal me so that I could see how they actually kind of did their healing how each of the different plants would would do their particular type of healing in their own unique way and then that they would then become my allies so that then I could then help heal others, not necessarily heal, but help to kind of um, help people on their healing path. 
And so from that, I developed a, 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 um, an essence range. And um, because, because to work with a, a plant or a flower essence is working, you can easily work with the consciousness of that plant because it's, it's the frequency of the, the plant in water. That's what an essence is. And so, as we know, everything is frequency. And so you connect to a plant through the frequency, through its frequency. And so the consciousness of the plant or, or tree can work through an essence really easily. Um, so, yeah, so I was trained in my Cel in, in our Celtic tradition. Um, a lot of what I, um, how I understand the plants and trees is really through the mythology of our islands, which is just so rich and just so magical. And, you know, we're just so blessed to live here. And, um, you know, and, and I, I realized that I, you know, I'd gone off studying Buddhism and I'd lived overseas for so long studying all these different traditions. And but actually, here is where it's at. And, you know, our Celtic tradition and the, you know, the, the folklore and the, the history of our islands and the magic that's in the land here and in the trees and the plants, because obviously the trees and the plants are in the land. And so all that magic comes through them. And so I just realized that I didn't have to go anywhere else to find this profound wisdom. It's here in our plants and trees and in the land in the rivers in the rocks and so i allowed yeah i just allowed the the plants to heal me and to to work through all of my traumas integrate lots of my shadow still work we're all still working on that i'm sure yeah. and uh yeah and just got to know them like that mm. yeah it's really interesting you said that about the celtic tradition um because i Last year, I did a shamanic course in Glastonbury, and I really connected to my ancestors. And I walked into the Labyrinth bookshop, and I spoke to, um, I think it's Jim there, and I said, have you got any books on Celtic shamanism? And his eyes lit up, and he said to me, yes, and he took me over to this bookshelf, and he told me this magical story that he'd been in India, and he'd gone to the Far East, and he'd done ashrams, and he'd gone into that tradition, for 27 years and when he came back two or three years ago he came to Glastonbury and he saw that there was this amazing Celtic tradition and he was like wow we've got our own indigenous tradition here and he went into the labyrinth bookshop and he saw that there was all these different traditions Nordic and African and Toltec and then he saw the Celtic tradition and he was so overwhelmed he bought the bookshop <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it, it, it is a magical thing when you actually connect to your own ancestry and and it, you've just answered my next question because my next question was going to be um it, it, you know is there any tradition of celtic you know plant consciousness and working i know there is but how do how do people get involved in that and is there written books or is it is it oral is it is it uh, something that you you have to go and see people well Okay, so as we know, our history, the, the Druidic history, if you start there, wasn't written down. So it feels like we don't have this kind of uh, lineage. But actually, when the way I work with the plant spirits and get to know them is that I do plant diets. And this, and this tradition, it's the, it comes from South America, you know, the, the, the process of it, but it's actually quite simple. You just literally spend a, a period of time, set aside a period of time uh, where you only communicate with that plant or tree and you only consume it for that period of time. But, you know, we, the, how else would the witches <laughs> have got to know their plant spirits? They had to do the same thing. So... I'm sure that this this is the, and the plants take to this methodology of working with them really well, like the plant spirits, they, they know it. So I'm not doing something that's introducing some something new to them at all. And so um, I, I know that the druids, you know, they look at the story of Taliesin, yeah. you know, it's the yes. back of the trees. How did he call in the spirits of those trees? if he didn't spend time with them, get to know them, communicate with them, bring them on board as allies, really get to know them and honor them because they don't, you know, when we communicate with plants and trees, it's 
the more we step into a sacred space with them, the more we they respond. It's like when you go to, you know, when you go to a stone circle. Yeah, you can, if you just stood there and with your camera and took loads of photos, stepped in, taking loads of photos and then you leave, that's your experience. But ask permission before you enter and recognize you're entering into a sacred and a sacred space. And then you step into it and you spend time in it and you communicate with the spirit of place. You're going to have a completely different experience mm -hmm. to the tourist. And so it's the same with the plants. You you step into their realm, you step into their dream, if you like, and you're stepping into a space with them that's sacred. And so they're not only reigniting and helping us to remember our sacredness, but they're also helping us to remember our divinity by doing that. Mm. And so um, so this, it's it's... It's like it's a tradition without, it's, it's like it's a true tradition, a tradition without a, a beginning. Mm. You know, it just, or I think it's just always been that way. We've always communicated with plants and trees. I think mm. it was just a natural part of life. It's just now become a thing. <laughs> yeah. Know, a plant communicator. You know, yeah. it's like, oh, it, it was just part of daily life. Yeah. Yeah, now that 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 is fascinating. I mean, I I've truly I've woken up and I know when I did my shine seminars in Glastonbury, I I just said, you know, Mother Nature is just amazing. She gives us everything. And somebody heckled me and said, "Of course she does." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was it was really powerful at that time in my life. I just suddenly reconnected, and 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 I was seeing things in a different way. Um, that was really magical, and just you know, looking at a plant and going. What what are you beautiful thing? You know what are you? Who are you? What you're talking to me? What you know? What what are you? I've got plants in my front garden that are just magic, and it would be you know, and there's so much of it as well, you know. And I've started going on foraging walks, and you know, people have taken me to like wasteland and said, look at this incredible plant here, and I've gone, what's that? And they've gone, it's comfrey, and there's a massive bush of comfrey and a bit of wasteland. You know, it's it's like it's all around us. But we're we're kind of like this, aren't we? It's everywhere, and um, uh, there know. is a thing called I think uh, nature blindness. Right. It's a thing that we're just so we we feel so disconnected. We're so kind of conditioned to be kind of only fixated on you know the the kind of the man made world um, in our square houses and you know on computers that we just we when we go out into nature we're still in our mind we're still in our busy mind and so we, we miss the trees and we miss those big comfrey bushes we just walk past them yeah. but actually if you just kind of spend time to just defrag lay on the ground for 10 minutes or sit up against a tree for 10 minutes before you do your walk in nature and you'll again you'll have a completely different experience because you're just realigning yourself to um, a different orientation of perception you're uh, realigning yourself to you're realigning your energy field to nature and so you're going to experience it better you do you, is there certain things that you do when you go out I mean do you do you go into this like kind of meditative walk I mean how does it work for you um I do lots of things really there's um there's a really good um way of kind of just like opening your awareness so that you're not just looking ahead that you allow yourself to perceive from your peripheral vision as well that's a really nice way to do a walk through a forest mm -hmm. because you're kind of like you're taking in a big a bigger kind of um a bigger a wider spectrum but because it's quite often these kind of like this you know the magic happens in the liminal places <laughs> and the magic happens on the edges of things so if you can just keep your awareness expanded out out here as well that's where you can kind of like perceive that's where things will start getting your attention yeah. you know you'll start recognizing oh what was that oh that's that tree i keep noticing that tree or you know or um you know the animals you'll just see them and you know kind of like running away or even you know if you've got kind of um uh strong perception and uh clairvoyancy you'd be able to, that's where you see the nature spirits is more likely to see them in, in your peripheral vision or through your inner vision mm -hmm. as well so so yeah when i go out depending on who i'm with or what i'm kind of doing i like to find kind of nice sit spots as well kind of nice meditation spots that are kind of off off the normal paths so that i can just sit and, and be with the trees or be with the plants and yeah just kind of 
and I just empty my mind and just see what comes up. You know, if I'm if I'm out and I need to communicate with a specific tree, if I'm working with a plant or a tree and I need to communicate with them specifically, then yeah, I'll kind of I'll have a you know I'll kind of do an a particular meditation to get my into me into that state, and and, and then open kind of a dialogue with them. So. Mm. So, yeah, it it's fascinating. I'm really looking forward to your talk, Emma. And you're talking about communicating and being conscious with um, plant spirit for vitality, mm. and I really like that word. Um, you know, how how for for people who are in because uh, we with a lot of health issues, they only ever approach things when people are unwell, and and I feel that we're moving into a space where there will be healthy people who want to increase their energy and increase their vitality by going into particular practices is there is there um how do you work on that level actually you know a very up vibration very you know not healing as such but actually thriving and moving forward and being expansive yeah. well you know um one of the main things i'll be speaking about is psychic hygiene so what I mean by this is the cleanliness of our energy field, the cleanliness of our energy that we're putting out, because um, this is one of the things that kind of gets forgotten in our healing processes is that um, we can heal the body, et cetera, but, and, and which of course then heals the energy field as well, because the energy field, the body, the mind, it's all one, but the energy field kind of gets forgotten. And so the more you time you spend in nature, the more plants you consume, the more essences you consume, the more the more meditation you do and to strengthen your chakras with the plants, then the cleaner your energy field. And this really helps to raise the vibration of you, your mind. It clears your mind. Mm -hmm. So vitality for me is a, a cl clarity of mind. Because when you have things in your energy field that is um, attached into your energy field, like perhaps an entity or um, toxic psychic debris that you pick up from society, because we do live in, in a, you know, a really quite toxic society. Um, so there are lots of places when, where you've got lots of kind of um, outpouring of human emotion, like um, train stations, hospitals, churches, you know, these kind of like the low, the stressed, stress and fear type emotions mm. um then you get a lot of uh energetic build up like toxic build up in the environment and when you walk through it you can pick it up so if you've already got some in your energy field you can pick up more because in the energy world like attracts like mm. so um so we can have um yeah we can have the uh toxicities energetic toxicities energetic uh, toxic thought forms um, we can have entities and we can and when we've been through trauma we can have lots of different trauma accidents arguments even um, mm. taking allopathic medicine drinking alcohol even can damage the energy field mm. and so can create either little holes in the energy field or actually splits in the energy field and we're leaking life force mm. so we the plants and trees help us to heal those things. So mm -hmm. each of the plants and trees will do different things. So for example, foxglove is great at re removing etheric mucus, which is the really heavy, sticky form of um, toxic psychic debris. Um, certain other certain plants like vervain and uh, mugwort, they're great at removing entities and lower astrals. And so the more we kind of work with these plants and trees and re release these things, which, you know, when we get to our age, you know, we've yeah. picked up quite a bit of baggage actually yeah. along the way. Yeah. It's just normal. And, um, and so by healing the energy field, bringing the integrity back to the energy field, really bringing a true sovereignty. This is what I really feel sovereignty is when we're, we're the only thing in our energy field. Yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, this creates more vitality. This gives us more energy. This gives us a clear and focused mind. Because when you've got those things in your energy field, they create false thoughts, they create doubt, they create cloudy mind, foggy thoughts. Um, we start projecting the, you know, our kind of uh, that toxicity onto others if we're not uh, conscious. And so by helping to release these, then we just become more vital, clearer, 
more kind of um, in our power, actually. It's really, it's really fascinating that um, you, you work on this level um, because there is so, especially in the cities, um, it, it does make me feel just like just going out and just living in the country. But <laughs> if you actually logically think about it, it's like, what am I doing in this this tarmac and concrete jungle? But I mean, have you got any kind of, you know, it's, it's an unfair question really, but have you got any like top three tips for people living in the city? <laughs> just just working with, you know, working with, you know, just in your field, what would you say if somebody just rang you up and said, look, Emma, I'm having a bit of a hard time and I'd, I'd, I'd love to work with some of your ideas um, and, uh, you know, I'm just feeling a little bit drained and there's lots of chaos in my life. What, you know, what would you, what would you say? I'd say um, lots of regular salt baths, salt baths, um, sea salt baths, you know, and strong sea salt baths, um, you know, and stay in it for a good 30, 40 minutes, you know, so keep topping up with warm water. But yeah. that, that is really good. I know people who live by the coast, they get to swim in the sea. And that's why there's so many people, um, you know, so this, this kind of resurgence of people swimming in the sea because you feel great afterwards. It's not just the cold, it's the, it's the cleansing that you get. Yeah. Um, so uh, salt baths, um, working with um, essences. So when we work with flower essences and plant essences, what, like I, I said earlier, what they do is because it's a, a frequency, um, you're, you're adding another frequency to your frequency. And so you're kind of patterning out those lower frequencies. So it keeps you high vibe. Um, I once went to the British Flower um, uh, Essence Association uh, annual gathering and everybody was pinging off the walls because we were just taking essences everyone trying everybody else's essences all weekend so I was high off essences yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know essences really are great and you can get some really great sprays or sprays yeah. to keep your energy field clean yeah. you know and and the, the other thing is grounding the more grounded we are when we're in a city we've got so much coming at us like so much information we're busy, busy, etc. We've got to get to the next place, got to pick the kids up, whatever. Then we're in our heads. And so we're not grounded. And most people don't live fully in their bodies. So mm -hmm. grounding is so good. So if you've got a tree in your garden, meditate under it. If you've got a bit, a patch of grass, stand with your bare feet on it regularly and ground deep into the earth and just, you know, really you know, mother earth composts, you know, so... Yeah. Yes, give her your toxicity, you know, just let her take it. Just let it flow into the earth and she'll compost it for you. So, yeah, there are three easy things to do. That's absolutely fantastic. I I, um, I go out and ground a lot. I've got a little bit of patch of grass out the front of my house and I go out there and just stand there. And sometimes if I'm feeling particularly kind of edgy, I actually rub my feet <laughs> on the ground like a horse. Um, I don't know what the neighbours think of me. <laughs> but it's but it, it works. But it's that, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, it's that, it's the, I think they call it the bubbling brook, don't they? That that pressure point under, at the, in the middle of your foot. That's where we take up the, the prana from the earth, the earth energy. Mm. And... Um, the more grounded we are, the less stuff we pick up in our energy field, the less likely you'll get, you know, it, you'll get, you know, kind of um, sideswiped, I call it, when you get kind of like you get something comes at you and you're not expecting it, yeah. you know, and so it can knock you sideways. Yeah. And so, but the more grounded you are, the less likely that's going to happen, the more solid you, you'll be, the more in your power you'll be but also the less likely you are to get infiltrated by entities as well, because they, you know, the more, the, the more the lights are on in someone's home, the yeah. less likely someone's going to come in and steal your TV. Yeah. 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 No, I get that. I totally get that. I, um, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I think it's fantastic that, that you're opening up the discussion and 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 showing people um, these beautiful um, ancient traditions. Have you noticed the resurgence at all? Is there? I mean, I, I I'd love to you to say yeah. There's loads of people out there who are really into it and going for it. But have you noticed any movement over the last few years in terms of um, you know interest in 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 the subject? Absolutely, hugely. 
So when I first started the plant consciousness event, I think it was in 2013 or 14, I can't remember, in London, everyone thought I was bonkers. You know, it's like, what? You're doing a, an event about what? How many people do you think are going to come to it? We had 350 people. Wow. So, yeah. and, and at that event, lots of people were saying, oh, I'm so happy you've done this. You know, I talked to my garden or, you know, I've really thought that plants were conscious all my life or, or I'm really recognized the animism and the consciousness in everything. So this is beautiful. And, but over the years, you know, more and more scientific research has gone into the consciousness of plants not necessarily from a spiritual perspective, but more in, in terms of like how they communicate, the mycelium web, you know, that the mother tree that communicates with its its kind of like offspring or, or the other the other trees in the environment. And so this, there's been a, a big kind of um, interest. I think Dame Judy Dench uh, on BBC even was like listening to the, the, the trees um, heartbeat or something years ago. And so that really gave it a big boost to just normalizing the knowledge that plants have consciousness. They're not just inanimate things. They make decisions, they're self-organizing, they evolve. And that's all. That's what they do individually. But the, how I work with them is that they, you know, you, yes, you, each plant and, and tree has its unique and individual spirit for that particular plant and tree. So it will have its own particular personality but then there's the overarching Davic spirit of the species. And that's that's the that's the quality of that the, the plants and trees that I work with. Um and so so that's a little bit more of a kind of a jump for people. Mm. Mm. But we're getting there, you know, well, we're getting there. <laughs> I, what I found, Emma, because you I I would I came down and uh, experienced your mugwort ceremony. Oh, yes. a couple of years ago yeah which was an interesting it was a it was like something out of a film because there was this huge storm um i don't know if you remember it was a very it was interesting etherically um psychically as well i you know i just shot down the motorway and did this amazing thing but i i found that um drawing out the you know that spirit of the mogwort with your teas and with your tinctures and it was it it's it's a it's a very ceremonial and very um it's a it's a it's actually a beautiful connection um you know that you that you give with the plants um and you know it can you do that with all the plants or are there certain ceremonial plants that people work with more than others because i know mogwort's a big one because of uh, it's it's ubiquitous around the world isn't it hmm. so it's when everywhere. when someone holds a plant ceremony that ceremony is only as good as the connection the person has with the plant. So I only hold ceremonies with plants that I have done diets with, that I've communicated with and worked with multiple times and for, for a long time. So mugwort being one of them. Um, I'm, so I only will do those particular ceremonies and uh, teachings with the plants and spirits that I know. So, um, but of course it could be done with any plants or trees, but I just need to get to know them first. So, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a real connection and it's an embodiment. You're, you're embodying that plant really. Absolutely. And what I'm doing is when I, when I open a sacred space and we step into a sacred space, I'm allowing that plant spirit to work through me. So it's almost like, a, like a transmission really of, of that plant spirit into so even the medicines I'm making so my medicines are only as good as my connection to the plant mm -hmm. and so I've got some students who are so psychic that they can take my plant essence and they have the downloads of all my teachings that I've received from the plants wow. so it's like so so they don't have to spend as much time dieting with the plants they can just take my essences and they get all the teachings through that and so they don't then have to die and so because there's so many plants and trees yeah, yeah. you know you can take somebody else's essence and you know if it's made well and made with uh, in co-creation with the plant spirit and so i can get their teachings through the essence as well so there are ways of speeding things up but yeah. um but generally yeah it has to be you know you have to have that you have to know the plant because because everything is frequency 
you know, you can get infiltrated really easily when you're working in the spirit realm, unless you have checks and balances, unless you have safety protocols, unless you know who you're calling in. Because if you don't, if you're just trying to connect to um, and, and call in a plant or, or, or a spirit that you have, you don't really know them, you've got nothing to comfort. And this is why I work with plant spirits, because we have the physical plants in our environment. So we, we get to know them in how they feel in our bodies. And we can't mistake their frequency. So when I call them in, I know exactly who's coming in. I'm not just calling in them randomly and hoping they show up. I'm drawing them in through a particular frequency. So when I diet with plants, what I'm doing is I'm looking for a particular way that that plant makes me feel. It, each plant or tree will create a different frequency in my energy field. And it will create like a different either vibration or feeling or um yeah vibrational feeling and so that the more i diet with the, the plant the more that that kind of frequency so with mugwort it's this kind of like wavy feeling over my chest and so the more i dieted with her the more the stronger that became and that's my direct telephone line to her she works through that frequency that's my unique connection to her and so everybody she'd have a different effect on everybody else so that's how I know it's her. If I didn't have that, I would just be hoping it was Mugwort. And you can't do wishy hopey in the spirit world because there are so many, yeah, there are so many beings in the lower astrals and we're all connected to the lower astrals, especially if we haven't done our shadow integration and we don't know ourselves very well then we can easily get infiltrated by entities and beings that want to be in a physical body or at least feed off our energy. And so I see this all the very, I see it very often that, you know, people are thinking they're calling certain uh, spirit team or guides in and they're not, they're calling a shadow aspect of it or something completely different that's just shadow dressed as light. <clears throat> and, and, and they can, they can appear as light beings, you know, so so you can't trust what you see your ways. You really have, it has to be about frequency. You know, everything is energy. It's, it's, in, it's interesting when people think of uh, plant medicine, sometimes they think of psychedelics. And I know there's a resurgence in psychedelics and I'll talk to you about that in a minute because I've seen lots of adverts for psychedelic mm. um, kind of uh symposiums and conferences but you know the the big one is ayahuasca and i i've 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 never gone for that experience because i feel that um it's far too intense for me at my stage in my life but you know um there's there doesn't seem to be a subtlety with a lot of these experiences and it's like you can obviously work with many many different plants um that are not kind of like you know in the media or push towards you um how do you how do you um how do you open up the kind of the conversation about these more subtle plants and these different essences and tinctures you can take because there is this this dominance of psychedelics and oh i had an ayahuasca experience and there are obviously much more subtle things absolutely you know but there, it's all medicine so you know ayahuasca is medicine and therefore it's not for everyone um you know and it is an it is an amazonian plant <clears throat> and if you've been to the amazon you'll see that amazonians are big built people they're big people they're strong you know they live in in much tougher environment than we do and they call us they just think we're very soft okay. and so those plants and if you go to the amazon and see the nettles out there the nettles are like this big with massive spikes and it's like oh my god <laughs> and and, but that's their plants. That's the plants that have evolved for them. They have co-evolved with the plants. Plants and humans co-evolve. You know, mm. that, that's a fact. Mm. So we've evolved to our plants. You know, yeah. <laughs> our, our bodies have evolved to our nature. And I'm not saying that ayahuasca doesn't have a place here because she came here to do a very specific job, I feel, and, and achieved it because a lot of people needed waking up to nature and that's a great thing that ayahuasca does she she wakes you up to all of nature to the spirit of all nature mm -hmm. and all the different plants and trees so she's done a really amazing job with that and and i experienced that myself so i'm in always in deep respect and gratitude to that plant spirit 
but of course anything that goes mainstream gets gets abused and misunderstood and it's an extremely complex plan that plan and so a lot of people recognize that you know they don't necessarily need to be blasted open that they don't necessarily need that brutal kind of yeah. um, awakening yeah. that there is actually a subtler way of working with plants that to be honest i have found is just as psychedelic as working with ayahuasca you can just have you know at the elder tree is our ayahuasca it has just as profound healings i have had more profound healings with that tree to be honest than than ayahuasca and it, and it teaches the same it teaches you how to die the elder tree so she'll teach you she'll show you like if you if you die today this is what you'll experience before you actually move on to wherever you want to go to this is what you'll have to deal with wow. this is you know when, when we cross the abyss when we you know when we kind of move through the the uh, astral plane as we're on our kind of like death journey then um this is what you'll encounter so it's much better to deal with that in your life. And that's the same as ayahuasca. You know, they call it the vine of, of the dead, you know, because it teaches you how to die mm. consciously. Yeah. And so, and, and that's elder, you know. So we have these, we have just the same kind of healing ability here. It's just not as sexy, is it? <laughs> well, I, I think it's the same thing you were saying about the Celtic tradition. It always seems that the foreign traditions or the, the non-native traditions seem to have more interest. But actually, we do have it all here and it's all available here. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I think because I've I haven't read all of your book, um, but I have, I have I've read, you know, a decent amount. And I do I do look at it now and then as well. And one of the things that I found fascinating is um, the way that you've in, encapsulated um, a, a kind of a a knowledge base that I haven't seen in other books before. And and I and I, I haven't read many books on plant consciousness in inverted commas, but my mum, believe it or not, who is an art is an artist, she used to draw really beautiful little drawings of herbs and flowers. She just constantly. And so I've got a little bit of a history there. And I used to read books about plants and flowers when I was younger. Um, and your book seems to bring all the kind of magic of the plants out. And as you as you read it, it's 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 kind of like a it's a flowing it's a flow it's like a waterfall of information. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your book and you know how you wrote it and why you wrote well I know why you wrote it because you wanted to communicate those ideas, but just talk a little bit about your book because it is a magical magical book. Oh, thank you. That's really kind. Yeah. So um, basically, um, I wrote I I, I wrote a proposal. Um, I sent it to one publisher. I wanted to be with Inner Traditions because my teachers are with Inner Traditions and they accepted and um, I got a contract the month before lockdown. So then I got given the time to write it. Wow. So um, I just sat in the garden. If you remember, it was really hot. Um, I sat in the garden and wrote it. it took me yeah. six months and um, it was just, yeah, I, I don't know. I just... Um, it's a book of two halves and so the first half I wanted it to be really practical I want people to be able to 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 just take the book and it be a practical guide to help people go and experience the healing qualities and the benefits of communicating and, and working with plant spirits so the first half is really that introducing you to my methodology that that I have learned from from my teachers but then I've kind of adapted um with you know to, to make it mine i've adapted it through um working with the plants and trees etc and um and then just incorporated all of the kind of the, the wisdom tradition teachings that have come through either from the plants or through my studies and um you know i'm really interested in the mind that's why i did a, a master's in buddhism um to understand you know the, how just understand the, how the mind works you know and they're the masters at it and mm -hmm. so um so I bring that through because um, that, that's really important. And so um, the second half of the book is dedicated. I've got 13 chapters, each dedicated to a different plant, uh, plant spirit, and either my journey with them or, or the teachings that have come through from the plant spirits and, and how they work with us um, to, to heal us. And then each chapter has a meditation that's adapted to for that particular plant or tree. And um, 
Yeah, it was uh, a really beautiful process of, of writing it, actually. And, um, you know, stressful at times, but um, it was... It, it, I, it just flowed because it was just, I just needed to get everything out of me into a structure. So it helped me actually in, in my teaching um, to actually structure everything I know. So, um, but, but to be honest, it's an introduction to my work. So, so that I was, it, you know, I wrote that at the start of 2020 now. So a good few years ago. And so now I've kind of, um, I've, I'm kind of, writing my my next book now <laughs> have, you, have you got a copy of the book there can we have a look i do yeah, yeah let's have a quick look because it's a it's a beautiful book and uh, like you said yeah it's lovely changes in plant spirits um absolutely fantastic um so number two how does that work how does the second book work yeah well um i had a, i just got given it from from um the yew tree and um, so, yeah, I, I'm not going to say what it is because no. I, I haven't even kind of written it. I haven't even asked my publishers if they'll publish it yet. So, um, but I've got a feeling they're going to like it. So, yeah, watch this space. So it's, it's basically an involvement. It's, it's kind of the next step on from from the, the kind of like the, the basics of working with plant spirits. It's really interesting how you bring it, bring in the metaphysical down into the practical guidance because mm. a lot of books, people don't, they do one or the other, but you seem to have got both really nicely there. So you're bringing in that kind of metaphysical and consciousness side, but also you're saying, this is how you do it. And not only this is how you do it, but actually this is how you do it with grace and ease in, in, a, in a sacred environment. So it really does cover, um, you know, a really beautiful wide sort of um, vista, uh, you know, of, the, of an experience with plants. Um, I mean, I, I, I truly, I, I truly hope that people become more connected to nature. And it seems that your work is kind of, you know, uh, it's like the bow of the ship in a lot of ways, in that um, you're, 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 you're doing something which is a magical, <laughs> a magical interpretation of the world of plants. And that hopefully people will, you know, come along on that journey with you, because there is a obviously there is a community and I know you do work with the shift network and the, and you're, you're very active in the kind of the conference symposium and teaching world but um you know it it, it really would help heal uh you know if people got more involved with with plant medicine you know yeah and you know at the end of the day we're all looking to connect with something greater than ourselves aren't we we're all looking to feel connected we're all wanting to feel that spirit that we're alive and you know the plants allow us to do this but also when you work with plants and trees you can't fail to come across magic you can't fail to see how magical it is and so your life just becomes imbued with magic and you know i have magical experiences like on a daily basis when i'm working with plants, you know because i work with them every day it's just you know it is my life yeah. and so you know it comes through synchronicities it comes through downloads it comes through um kind of meeting great people it comes through um insights into my life insights into my healing jumps in my you know kind of leaps and bounds in my spiritual practice so you know this it just brings you so much vitality like you say and and just it brings just reignites magic and you know we all need that don't we <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's interesting. I was talking to someone the other day and we I, we were saying, actually, for yourself, Emma, you're very concentrated in what you're doing and you're very focused in what you're doing, which is which is magical in itself, because lots of people have great knowledge, but they can't actually bring it out and manifest it into something which other people can can realize and take on and utilize. And you do that really magically. You actually through your book and through your online work and um I, I, you know, we're not, we're just remembering, aren't we? And and you're like a node, you're a node of consciousness that's saying, well, actually, this exists. And look how amazing it is. Look how beautiful it is. Come and experience it and come and, you know, enjoy the healing process of, of nature and, and, and all, in all its glory. We've almost been told that nature is a problem. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know and, um, and even that we're parasites on the earth you know we get that kind of idea that we're, we're creating all these problems you know on the earth and and it's not we're children of the earth yeah. she loves us the plants and trees love us and when you get seen really seen by a plant spirit 
and it, it offers you some healing you're just like oh my god it's like it's like coming home you know it really is like a deep deep remembrance of who we truly are that we are these we the children of the earth we are created from the earth uh, we've got earthly bodies this the soul forces of the earth have created our earth bodies and you know we're not separate from from her or or the plants and trees and we're, we're actually you know i feel we've evolved from plants so um so yeah um it's just coming home like you say yeah it's beautiful you know Emma, we we've got our 45 minutes i'd love to oh. talk I'd love to talk more, but I, I'm going to keep it to that because I feel actually people can integrate and digest if they don't take on too much information. Um, and a, a little bit like your book, it, this is a taster of, uh, you know, and um, an offering from yourself to to my community or to the Shine Seminars people. I'm so looking forward to your talk. And, um, you know, I know you're really busy. Have you got anything else that you're doing? Have you got any events you're doing or anything you want to tell us about? Um, well, I run the School of Natural Esoterics, and um, I have, which is naturalesoterics.org, um, or you can access that through my plantconsciousness.com website. And through it, at the natural, School of Natural Esoterics, I, I run both online and in-person courses. So I do plant diet, concentrated plant diets. I've got one coming up in, in September with the apple tree, which is really beautiful. As we yeah. know, it's sacred to our land here in Somerset. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, and, and I'm always kind of running online stuff and, uh, and that's so you can just, people can just sign up to the newsletter, but I'm really looking forward to coming to the Shine Gathering. You know, it's going to be <laughs> so exciting. I'm so proud to be part of this community and to be oh. sharing this because, you know, what you do and bringing all these people together is just phenomenal and we need it so much. There's nothing beats being in person. There's nothing being beats being in, in you know in community and so I'm really pleased to be um, not only doing the talk but I'm going to be running a little ceremony for for a group who are interested aren't I with, uh, yeah. with, with a particular plant I'm not I'm not giving away which plant it's going to be yet but uh, we're going to be doing a little ceremony as well well all I can say Mary, is I am so grateful for you coming I know you're super busy and I really appreciate you taking time out to spend time with us at the celebration um you know, uh, I really am, you know, you're you're so in service to people. And I really, you know, I just want to say thank you um, on behalf of everybody, because you are doing a, a beautiful, amazing thing for us all. And, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing you in August. So um, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you, Eli. And the same to you. See you yeah. soon. Yes. Bye.